Welcome back TCS viewers, it's Chris Nichols here from the camera store and we've got a first for you today because we've got the brand new Pentax MX-1 production camera. Now the Pentax MX-1 is aiming itself at the high-end prosumer uh, point-and-shoot market. This is going to go against cameras like the G15 and the upcoming Fuji X20. But is it all just retro good looks or is there a decent camera under this brass? Come with me and we're going to find out. Now, when it comes to the look, feel, and handling of this camera, you, you got to recognize at the start that MX-1 text. I mean, that's like the classic Pentax MX camera. In fact, it really looks like that SLR from the front too, you know, of course, sans prism. But all in all, as a point and shoot, it's a fairly chunky brick. I will say this too, it's got a lot of weight to it. Now, some people are going to love that, some people aren't. I mean, it is definitely heavier than something like a G15. And that's in part because of the brass top and bottom. This is a novel feature. I mean, I don't think it's going to make the camera any more rugged or anything, but Pentax is all over the fact that as you use this camera and scratch it, you're going to get beautiful brass showing, just like those classic cameras. You know, we've got really cute features here, like a little pop-up flash, nice and protected, although I do wish it would bounce. I wish I could point it up in the air. That's, that's too bad. The screen, though, look at that rotating articulating screen and that's not something that Pentax does in a, you know very often so that's a nice cool feature that they've added we're going to talk a bit more about the screen later now as far as controls go folks it's a very simple very logical layout but for a high-end camera like this I would have liked to have seen more button controls I know it keeps it streamlined but some of these buttons could have been bigger I would like to see more dials two would have been nice you know one in the front or an alternate dial now if you look at it compared to a G15 we're definitely shorter, but overall, this is a big camera. It's going to take up a lot more space in your pocket. you got to love the look, or else it's just going to be a bulky brick for you to carry around. Now, first off, you folks at home can see on the video just how, how rough the contrast is here. Bright snow, bright sunlight, terrible lighting to do a video shoot today. But, you know, it's also tough for little cameras like this. These 12 megapixel, 1 over 1.7 sensors don't get naturally a ton of dynamic range. However, the MX-1 does have a cool HDR mode, and I'm going to turn it on right now. Just a flick of the dial. And what's cool about this is we actually have three strength settings. Now, you take a photo. It does it very quickly. It's going to process. It's pretty quick. And we get our HDR shot, and it does look like it's compiling multiple photographs together. You've got standard, strong one, and then strong two. Not a lot of difference between the first two settings, but the third setting looks like photomatics to the nth degree, and a lot of people are going to dig that. Myself, not so much, but certainly it is working. It is a great way to get shadow detail in the trees and still not blow out that snow in the background, so better than nothing. I'm going to take a movie here because we've got little midges hatching all around the ice here and flying around. Now, as far as video goes on the MX-1, it's actually pretty impressive. We're getting 720 at 60 frames per second. We're getting 30 frames per second at 1080. Stereo sound, of course. And uh, it's, it's nice to have, but if you're looking for manual exposure, don't look here. Still, quality's nice, and we can get some nice little videos here. Here's something very cool about the camera, something I actually really like. Doing macro shots here on these cameras is great because, of course, we've got fairly small sensors. But this camera, you don't have to focus uh, and, and go into a macro mode when you want to get close up. It just goes right into it. And for the ultimate macro, I can go to one centimeter macro, literally get right in here, just like that. And I'm getting full res. Uh, you know, no sort of digital cropping. It's beautiful. This camera does beautiful macros. Focuses really quick when you're doing the macro too. You know, the camera metering is nice. The screen updates uh, what exposure you get. And the exposure comp dial there is very, very handy. So all in all, very easy and comfortable to change your settings on this camera on the fly. All right, so let's go through our standard high ISO performance. This is a 1.17 sensor. And as we start going up here from ISO 800, we're going to see what this can actually do. Now, here you're going to notice noise is actually very, very well controlled on the Pentax. As we go higher here, I'm noticing a trend. The Pentax does stay very sharp, but it does seem to introduce a lot of chromatic noise. Now, remember, that's not such a big deal. I know it looks ugly when you see it here, all this purple and green, but the fact is chromatic noise is a lot easier to get rid of in post. It's a lot easier than, uh, than soft images to take care of. So nice and sharp and crisp here as we go higher. 
Now, the 1.17 sensor here, 12 megapixels, is very comparable to Canon's G15. So let's just take a look at a couple shots and see how they compare. And as I've noticed here, the Canon does look softer. The Pentax has a better crispness. Certainly the Canon doesn't have the chromatic noise, but again, that's easy to get rid of. I'd also say this too, Without any sort of highlight correction or dynamic range improvement set on, I do find the Pentax still has better shadow detail than its competitor as well. It's really, really very impressive out of this small chip. Well, I mean, instead of looking for fish that I should be casting to here, why don't we take this opportunity to talk about the lens on the MX-1? You know, it's really nice, actually. Pentax have done a great job. We're getting a 28 to 112 kind of range, four times zoom, not as long as its competitors, but we are getting a beautiful aperture, 1.8 to 2.5, nice and quick, whether you're wide or telephoto. Also, you know, when looking at this lens, we're getting nice sharp edges. I'm not noticing really any major fall off to worry about. It's a beautiful, beautiful lens. You know, the Canon G15 that we've kind of been comparing this camera against is gonna give you more of like a five times zoom, and you're getting a 1.8 to 2.8 aperture. So the Pentax is doing very well against its competitors, and from what I've seen today, it's nice and sharp. For this part here, you know, we've got brutal light today, and I wanna use it to talk about uh, good and bad things about the MX1 here. Now, first off, the screen, even in direct sunlight, this screen is actually very viewable. And of course, the rotation is also very handy. We've been using it quite a bit today for macro shots. But the other cool thing is I can go in the menu here on this LCD and I can actually change things like brightness level. I can even change it to more amber, blue, or green magenta. I can change hue and, and tone. And this is nice if I want to customize a screen or be able to see it in brighter light. I mean, this is, this is a very nice option. So the screen's great. It's three inches and it looks super crisp. I've been very impressed by that as well. However, the MX-1 has no option for a hot shoe. I mean, I'm not gonna use a flash on these things. They're too bulky, but it would be nice to have an EVF. There's competitors in this price range that have EVFs. And in bright light like this, it would be great to be able to bring the camera up to my eye and maybe even extend the battery life at the same time. So I do think that that's kind of an oversight. They've missed out on that, but at least they did give us a fantastic screen for these adverse lighting conditions. I wanna take you guys on a little tour of the camera here because the MX-1 has been very thoughtfully designed and I love that we've got customizable features that you're gonna want, but that aren't too technically complex. Things like be able to change your ISO sensitivity to third stop increments. That's very rare to find on a camera of this caliber. Electronic shutter on and off. Being able to adjust your white balance for tungsten situations so if you've got a bit of mixed lighting, you can get a more subtle effect or a stronger correction. Uh, things like the camera remembering where you were when you turn it on and take you to the last menu that you were at, be able to set this camera for iFi cards, be able to change the screen and LCD colors. You know, it's, it's just the right amount of complexity. Pentax do have a habit of making a lot of their cameras too technical. You gotta be a photo nerd to really figure them out. This is a great mix of, of good thoughtful features but still simplistic intuitive design. Overall, the camera's a pleasure to use that way. Now when it comes to autofocus, we've got great controls as well. I push one button on the back and I can instantly move my camera focus anywhere I want, nice and quick, and I will say this folks, Pentax got the focus speed right. This camera is very responsive, it's quick to the target, it's accurate, you're not sitting there waiting, but you get great quick autofocusing when you do need it. All right, guys, so here's my final word on the Pentax MX-1. You know, overall, it's been a really fun camera to use, it's been intuitive, and as you use the controls, you find that it's actually very, very well designed. I also like the retro design. I know Pentax is going on the same bandwagon as everybody else, and that's a good thing. I like that they're going in the right direction. Whatever you think about the Pentax K01, how good a camera it was, it was hideous and it was gross and nobody bought the thing. I think people will pick this camera up. Now the MX-1 is, is a near perfect camera. It has some things I wish that we, we could have incorporated here. Things like a hot shoe would have still been nice and an EVF option would have been even nicer. And this front lens ring is just begging for a manual control dial. I don't know why they didn't do that. A manual focus ring would have made this camera excellent. But still, you're getting great image quality, you're getting a great screen, you're getting great features and customizability, and you know, this retro design, it's, it's endearing. I think a camera like this now is not an also ran, folks. The MX-1 is a very fierce competitor in this market. I would take a hard, long look at this and uh, maybe find one in your camera bag.